えー、皆さんこんにちは。空の桜井。Hello everyone. This is Masahiro Sakurai from Sora Limited. The Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Game was recently honored with five awards at this year's Japan Game Awards. It's received a great many awards on top of that as well. Each award is very meaningful to me, so I would like to take the opportunity to extend my thanks to all those who have voted and to all those who have supported us. Thank you so much. Without further ado, let's begin the presentation. First, we'll start with what the Neo Geo is. It refers to a 1990 video game console for use in arcades and at home, as well as to the name of the system itself. In 1990, the equivalent to the Super NES had only just released in Japan, so if you wanted to play arcade games at home before then, the only option was to play the less polished ports on the Nintendo Entertainment System. However, with the Neo Geo system, you could play the arcade versions of games at home with no drop in quality. 1990 was right around the year that I started working for a game company. Back then, Japan had rental services for arcade games. In other words, you could go to a rental store, rent an arcade game, take it home, and play it. After that, they were sold for home use, but a single game would cost about 30,000 yen. That's expensive. But if you think about it, compared to playing a game in the arcade 300 times at 100 yen per play, you're getting your money's worth. At the time, some people actually thought this was cheap. I mean, there really are people who've played games in the Super Smash Bros. series 1,000 or even 10,000 times. Anyway, the MBS, as it was called then, was sold in various places, and for an arcade machine, it wasn't all that expensive. You could also get them on lease. That's why you'd end up seeing lots of candy stores having a metal slug cabinet. The home version of the Neo Geo came with this controller. Can you see? It has four buttons. And this is the actual console itself. Here is the reset button, and here you slot in the big game cartridges. This is the Neo Geo? Just kidding. <laughs> Actually, this is the Neo Geo X, the portable version that was released afterward. You could also insert it into this docking station and play it as a home console. Beat Nintendo Switch to it! A portable, multi purpose console. Updated iterations of past systems are emblematic of the Neo Geo. Next, let's talk about what Fatal Fury is. It released in 1991, the same year as Street Fighter 2, but this one came later. It launched after Street Fighter 2. Like many of the other fighters, Fatal Fury was often regarded as a title that was developed to capitalize on the popularity of Street Fighter 2, but that's not really the case. Actually, both Street Fighter 2 and Fatal Fury were developed using the original Street Fighter as a foundation. In fact, the development of Fatal Fury was started by one of the planners of Street Fighter. Did I just hear you say, wow? This one is also a multiplayer focused fighting game. In this story, someone named Jeff Bogard is killed by Geese Howard. Geese Howard starts up a fighting tournament in Southtown, which he runs. To avenge his father's death, Terry enters the tournament, which is known as King of Fighters. I mentioned the term King of Fighters, something you may have heard before. Yes, there's actually a popular series called The King of Fighters, and that series was named after the fighting tournament within the world of Fatal Fury. And Terry Bogard, who is the protagonist of Fatal Fury, also appears in all the games in the King of Fighters series as one of the main characters. If you want to play a game from either of the Fatal Fury series or the King of Fighters series, many of them are available now on Nintendo Switch as part of the Arcade Archive series. You may not know which one to play first, but my recommendations from the Fatal Fury series would be Fatal Fury Special. From the King of Fighters series, my recommendation would be the King of Fighters 95. But if you want to play a fighting game with all sorts of strategic elements, then I recommend the King of Fighters 98. Next, I'll give you some insight on Terry Bogart. 
Actually, this video was recorded about one month prior to its release. That's because we need to translate and edit videos like this one, and that takes time. The game footage you see here is not from the final production ROM, so please understand that there may be some elements that differ from the final game. Since we have the opportunity, I want to talk about Terry using a lot of SNK lingo, meaning in this discussion the younger generations may feel a little out of the loop. But there's nothing to worry about. When we released the original Nintendo 64 version of Super Smash Bros., I was often asked, who is Samus? Whether or not the character is fun to play as is more important than whether the character is new or old, or whether the character is recognizable to everyone. I want to make sure I present Terry to you in such a way that you can fully understand his appeal. So thank you. Okay, let's begin. This is Terry Bogard in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. He's still wearing an outfit that reflects the era of his original game, but we did our best to make him look cool in a variety of ways. When he stands next to Ryu, it almost makes you wonder, is this really a Super Smash Bros. game? Doesn't it? Just like Ryu, when you're playing one-on-one, -on -one, he'll face the opponent. Actually, he always looks in the opponent's direction. Even if you move him to a location behind the opponent, he'll quickly turn around, always keeping his focus on the opponent. Let's talk about his moves. His neutral attacks are jab, body blow, and high kick. Each move is something familiar from the Fatal Fury series. And his dash is power charge. This is a move you can use in real bout Fatal Fury Special and others. In the original series, it was one of his special moves. His tilt attacks are middle kick, rising upper, and underkick. Compared to Ryu, his attack speed is slower. This is to match his original series. Now for smash attacks. First up, backspin kick. This smash attack is the equivalent to his strong attack, but the motion is even cooler than in his original series. Next, wild upper and slide kick. Both are from the original series. Then his mid-air moves. Jump, then chop. Jump, then kick. Jump, then backward kick. And then somersault kick. However, this somersault kick was not included in the original series. But we needed a move to attack up. So we created a new move. Also, jump and then karate punch for a down air attack. If you successfully pull off a down air, it's possible to attack with a meteor effect, as you can see here. It's basically like Ryu's. Next, I'll cover his throws. His forward throw is his familiar buster throw. His back throw is also buster throw. And his down throw is neck breaker drop. In fact, he used it in the game Fatal Fury, Wild Ambition. I miss playing that game on Hyper Neo Geo 64. And then, his up throw is grasping upper. This sort of dodge attack can be performed after a spot dodge. I mentioned dodge attacks. And this actually does exist. During a spot dodge, immediately press the button to counter attack. During a dodge attack, your upper body becomes invincible, so this kind of move gives you the advantage when you counterattack. Now for special attacks. His neutral special with just the B button is Power Wave. Depending on how long you press the button, you'll use one of two types of special attacks, weak and strong. This one is weak and kinda slow. And this one is strong. Fast, isn't it? For Ryu, in his original game, you used three buttons, so there were weak, medium, and strong attacks. For Terry Bogard, you could use four buttons in his original game, but there were only two buttons for punch, so that's why he only has two attack levels, weak and strong. This rule applies to all of his special attacks, so please keep that in mind. By the way, the attack power wave is a move that shoots energy along the ground. But how does it look in the air? In his original game, you couldn't use this move in the air. 
This is how it looks now. As of the King of Fighters 96, the Power Wave ability had a shorter range, so we've recreated that version of the move. It's a useful move in midair and helps keep opponents in check. Next, we have a special performed while holding in the direction of your opponent, Burning Knuckle. This move also has a weak and strong version, as well as a command input. Like the Hadouken command input from Street Fighter 2, you perform this command using the directional input, down, to the side, in the direction of your opponent, and then press the button. Doing so makes the move a bit stronger. This means that Burning Knuckle has four variations. Weak without command input, and strong without command input. Weak with command input, and strong with command input. The strong version using the command input is of course the most powerful. You'll hear a noise when you input the command. And if you've succeeded, you might also notice some green mixed in with the flames. It may be slight, but there is a difference. The strong version with the command input really is strong, even capable of KOing opponents. It can be blocked, however, so be on the lookout for that. In such a case, you'll be left wide open. And this is a first for the Super Smash Bros. series, but the side specials are split into two versions, a back special and a front special. That means there's one more side special than usual, Crack Shoot. This is a familiar move from his original game. There's also a command input version. It's performed by using the directional buttons down to the back, followed by the A or B button. The command version can launch your opponent quite a bit further. It creates a bit of an arc, so it can be used as an anti-air attack when your opponents try to hit you. At close range, if you happen to be blocked by a shield, it's hard to be counter-attacked because you'll pass through them. There's something I want you to remember. When you do a crack shoot off-screen, this is how it will look. Terry swings with his whole body when using Burning Knuckle and Crack Shoot, so it can be hard to recover. However, if you keep pressing backwards without inputting commands, you should be able to initiate Crack Shoot in the direction you're trying to recover. Let me show you one more time. Do this, then continue to press backward. And then you can recover. If you press too quickly or input some commands, you'll fly right off the stage, so be careful. And this is his up special, Rising Tackle. It also has weak and strong versions, each with differing heights. And did you notice that if you hold down briefly to charge, your whole body glows a little? In this case, your whole body will be invincible at the start. Either way, your legs will be invincible. Here's an example of this invincibility in action. With the standard Rising Tackle, I got completely wiped out when I threw myself at them. But with Rising Tackle's charged command version, you can't be hit at this moment, so you come out on top. You can of course use Rising Tackle as a recovery as well. Even after using Burning Knuckle or Crack Shoot, you can still use Rising Tackle. This is also very helpful when you're trying to recover, so please keep that in mind. His down special is Power Dunk, an attack that rises and descends. This side, down, diagonally, down command input is also known as the Shoryuken command. If you can pull it off, you'll be invincible at the start of the move. Also, you can hear a sound when it connects. But it might be tough to make out. Now, let's talk about cancelling specials. I'd really like you to keep this in mind. First, if you use a special after attacking with a standard attack, 
The special won't come out until the move animation has finished. That makes sense, right? But here's what happens if you cancel out of it. At this moment here, if you've successfully entered a special command input, the rest of the animation will be cancelled, allowing you to attack again immediately. I'll do that again. Throw out a kick like normal. And once your leg extends, you'll perform the move. Set it up so that when you attack, you can go straight into a special. This will increase your offensive options. Please try this out. For example, neutral attack 1, 2, and power down. This is a bread and butter combo. Aside from that, you can also get Terry to fly out and attack in an M shape. In his original game, you could only cancel attacks on the ground, but in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, it's possible to cancel aerial moves. The types of aerial attacks that you can cancel are limited to things like neutral air attacks or down air attacks. But I think it would be wise to use these combos to expand your offensive options. And at last, the final smash. His final smash begins with a triple geyser. Terry will shoot three geysers straight forward. However, if you think that's all, you're very mistaken. As you can see, if Triple Geyser connects, you'll follow up with Power Dunk and Buster Wolf. It's three moves in one. It's a visually striking combo. You may be wondering what happened to his original super special moves. Yes, they're here too. With the usual rules, when Terry's damage meter rises up to 100% or higher, and in stamina mode, when his overall HP drops to 30% or less, you'll see this Go icon at the bottom of the screen. At this point, if you enter this specific command, you can initiate the power geyser you see here. The command input is, if I borrow the way it's said in the original game, down, angle down, side, angle down, forward. Well, it's a bit complicated. Downward, then backward, then forward. You see? It is an action game after all, so you get to control the direction of your punch, be it right or left. In that case, no matter which direction you're going for, just swap the right input and left input. It's like this, downward, then backward, then forward. Or down, and then the opposite direction, if that's forward. And then, there's his other super special move. Buster Wolf. You can initiate this one by repeating the Hadouken command input twice. Down to side, then down to side again. It can be rather difficult to pull off moves using the original game's command inputs, but you can also use simplified command inputs. In the case of Power Geyser, remember this, down, side, down, forward. As long as you input the command downward to the side, to the back, downward again, and then forward, you should be fine. In the case of Buster Wolf, it's simply down, side, down, side. That should be easier to remember. Even though the command input is complex, it can still be blocked with ease. Since these moves can only be used when Terry has taken a lot of damage, you'll be in even more danger if your opponent blocks. So they're high risk and high return. Please save them for when you really need to make a last ditch effort. You can use it again and again, but be careful. Your opponent may be able to predict your move and take action. Essentially, it's best to use it when it's least expected, or to cancel out of a combo, like this. For the taunts, I decided to match his original game. His up taunt is Hey Come On Come On from the King of Fighters series. His down taunt spins his hat like in the real bout series, 
And his saiton is stand up from Garo, Mark of the Wolves. I've demonstrated him using various special moves in the game so far, and you can hear his voice. Like that. We've incorporated both his longer remarks, like Power Wave, from older titles, and his shorter remarks, like Rock You, from newer titles. And here are his color variations. There's a good variety of colors available from across the series, and the cap design is slightly different in each version. They're based on his original games, and we've also included some from the King of Fighters 14 and the anime series. He sometimes takes off his cap too. For example, it happens during his victory pose. His cap also blows away when he is defeated in stamina mode. The stage is called King of Fighters Stadium. It looks like one hardcore fighting coliseum. The text above the Jumbotron reads, King of Fighters, without the. When we talk about a game title, we need the up front, but the name of the tournament in the game's story is just King of Fighters. This is a very unique stage, and it follows some rules that haven't existed in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate before. First, the edge is walled off. In the Super Smash Bros. series, you need to launch opponents off the stage. Here, however, the more damage a fighter has accumulated, the more the wall will visually react when they're launched into it. Can you see? Eventually, fighters will break right through the wall. There are fireworks in the background. Basically, this special feature allows you to KO an opponent only after they've accumulated enough damage. That way, you can enjoy the battle more like you would in a traditional fighting game. When you're close to the wall, it's possible to be KO'd even when your damage is low. It's just like in regular stages. In the real bout Fatal Fury series, there was a feature in which the walls could be destroyed and players could suffer a ring out when they hit the wall. This isn't exactly the same, but we made it kind of similar to that. We hope you'll enjoy playing at this stage with all its special rules. By the way, there are guest characters in the background, right? Since we have the opportunity, I'd like to introduce them to you. First up, Andy Bogard. He's the adoptive brother of Terry Bogard. Both of them were adopted from an orphanage and raised by Jeff Bogard. However, while Terry's teacher was Jeff Bogard, Andy studied under Mai Shiranui's father. He uses the Koppoken fighting style. Joe Higashi. He's one of the three main characters from earlier games in the Fatal Fury series. He's the only one that doesn't have any connection to Geese Howard. He's a Muay Thai champion. Kung Fu Ru. He's the master of the Holy Fist of Eight Ways, and he also trained Jeff Bogard. He can enlarge his body as well. Billy Kane. He's been in many Fatal Fury games since the first one, and he's the right-hand man of Geese Howard. While he appears in the first game, his costume is based on his appearances in King of Fighters 97 onwards. You can't really see his back, but the no-smoking symbol is definitely there. Geese Howard. He's the big boss of Southtown. And he's the rival of Terry Bogard. Falling off of buildings is his thing. Rock Howard. His first appearance was Garo, Mark of the Wolves. He's the son of Geese Howard, and Terry actually raised him. That means his appearance in this game at this age with that look doesn't really jive with the timeline, but Smash is kind of like that to begin with, right? Kim Kapwan. He uses Taekwondo and considers himself a fighter for justice. His Ho'okyaku is very famous. Ryuji Yamazaki. His first appearance was in Fatal Fury 3, and he's a criminal known as Dark Broker. He's very selfish and sadistic. Blue Mary. 
Her first appearance was in Fatal Fury 3, too. She uses Combat Sambo, and she's a good drinking buddy of Terry's. Those were the characters from the Fatal Fury series, but from here on, let me introduce characters from other series. Athena Asamiya. She's a Psycho Soldier. Psycho Soldier is a memorable game released around 1986, and it was the first title to feature a fully voiced theme song within the game. This epic song was also remixed for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, and it was recorded in both Japanese and English. Music Start Kyo Kusanagi. He's the protagonist of the King of Fighters series, and he uses the ancient martial arts Kusanagi Ryu. Speaking of the protagonist, there are differences depending on which version you're talking about, like Orochi and Nest. Anyway, he is forever a school kid. Iori Yagami. Originally, he was introduced as Kyo Kusanagi's rival, but when I first saw this character in the game at the time, due to his look and attitude, I thought, whoever created this character must be a genius. Goro Daimon. He's a judo gold medalist belonging to the Japanese team, and he likes to throw his opponents. Chang Hohen and Choi Bonge. One is an escaped convict, and the other is a slasher. They are currently undergoing rehabilitation under the previously mentioned Kim Kapwan. Ralph Jones and Clark Still. Originally, they were main characters in the Ikari Warriors series before Neo Geo. They appeared as guests in the Metal Slug series too. Ryo Sakazaki, the protagonist of Art of Fighting. The original Art of Fighting was released just before Fatal Fury 2. That means it was the first game to implement a true super special move. How could I not include him? King, her first appearance was in Art of Fighting and she's a bouncer and bodyguard. She is a beautiful woman with an androgynous sense of style. Next, Yuri Sakazaki. She was kidnapped in the first Art of Fighting game, but after that, she trained hard and mastered Kyokugen Karate in just one year. In other words, she's a genius. So, as you can see, we've included many characters. A total of 20 characters. You know, it's very cumbersome. I mean, it takes a lot of time. But so many people love each and every one of these characters, even outside the confines of their individual series. So we simply had to do our best by them. By the way, you may have noticed that a very important character from the Fatal Fury series was not included. Yes, Mai Shiranui. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate is for good boys and girls of many different ages, so we decided not to feature her. Please forgive us. Also, my music features a variety of tracks, and the music that plays affects which special guests will appear. For example, there is a track called Pasta, and when the music is playing, Andy Bogart will always appear. I hope you look forward to that as well. Okay, I'm done providing information, so now let's jump into some actual battles. This time, I'm going to play the Terry route of Classic Mode. On top of that, I want to try and hit the highest intensity level. Let's see if I can get all the way up to intensity 9.9. .9. Honestly, playing the game in extreme difficulty while doing commentary is extremely hard. One or the other is doable, but doing both at once forces me to divide my attention. But that means I should do my best at both. I'll do my best. First, this route is named the King of Smash. Three characters who have some sort of connection will appear as a set, a challenge that looks somehow familiar. Okay, the first intensity level is 5.0, so I should be fine. All battles in Terry's route are stamina battles. This stage's special KO rule that I talked about earlier isn't the best match for stamina rules, but oh well. On his route, a lot of stages feel like they're from a traditional fighting game. Okay, I did it anyway. Of course, even in this mode, it's not impossible for me to try for a KO, but normally it'll be over before that. There. Done. 
Looks like he's saying, give me something. Next, round two. It's the Legend of Zelda team. Just because characters are in a team because of their similarities, that doesn't mean that they have to be from the same game. This is Let's Go to Seoul, King Kapwan's team. And I've got it set up so that we don't move from the bottom of Prison Tower. It would be easiest to simply knock him off the screen, but I'm not going to do that, because it's not as fun to watch. Oops, I knocked him off. Over here. It's gonna blow. Will he do it? Alright. The boomerang's not coming back. And I can't go to the edge. Oh no! <laughs> the tables have turned. Cancelled it. He wears his cap backward when he does a power dunk. Now you could call this the giant stage. All the giants are lined up. Of course, the music track is Taku and Steppi. Of course, he says. You might wonder who Taku and Steppi are. But it seems like it means Tanaka and Kitamura. This track is from Fatal Fury 2. There's a giant wrestler named Big Bear, and this is his track. Regardless of the track name, it's a really famous hard rock song. So please give it a listen. The original song was called Yu Shadaiden. There's that masked wrestler. Big Bear is his true identity. He's called Raiden. Jump! I'm beginning to find the intensity quite tough. Round 4. The whole atmosphere is a little different than how it's been up until now, right? We've been to arena-style flat stages, but suddenly we're at a battlefield form stage. Oh, there's an item. There's an arcade game series called Athena, and this stage uses that as a motif. Oh, he's metal. Now that I'm thinking about it, I suppose both Lady Palutena and the Athena games were possibly an homage to the Athena of Greek mythology. Plus, I wanted to do something where two characters who are similar or have similar abilities are together. It's a nice Kokugenyu team. If I let my guard down, I'll easily be defeated, so I need to pay attention. Not bad, you. By the way, you can use moves like Crack Shoot to aim for overhead platforms so they have some utility to them. I kept her in check. Phew, that was close. Looks like that fire bar didn't work out for her. It's getting brutal. The intensity is close to 8. You could say the opposing team is comprised of heroes from different companies. Sonic and Terry are on the stage. Actually, Sonic and Terry were both created in 91, so they're the same age. And the next year, in 92, Kirby was born. Everyone's getting old. But they're still on active duty. You know, it's easier to fight on sloped ground. When using crack shoot, it's especially easy going uphill. Yikes! It's too soon to be taking this much damage. I started out with 150 HP, so I feel like I'm losing. Next, Mega Man. He was born in 87. The first Street Fighter came out in 87 as well, so that makes Ryu the same age. 
That was bad. Don't go off screen. Ah, he went off. I'm sorry. And now, Pac-Man from 1980 is here. Of course, this character was made by Bandai Namco Studios, but when I talk to their team, I'll call him your company's character. They always come back saying, oh yeah, our company's character. I often have these kinds of exchanges with them. Oh, that was close. But I won't give in until the very end. Because I've got a super special move. How was that? Not enough? I see. Well, how about now? It's bad to keep using the same move, seriously. <laughs> Next, you could call this Team Darkness. With the track Soy Sauce for Geese playing on the rooftop, it's got the aura of a final showdown. Oh, not good. Up next is Ganondorf. I don't want to get hit by him. Not even once. He's huge. Thanks. You can't take things lightly in moments like this one. That was a bad move. Alright, can I do this without getting hit? Now for a scary one, Bayonetta. Yep, I'm giving this everything I've got. Oh, that was just dangerous. Pulling off that mid-air jump is risky. Uh-oh. She's so good. That was a beautiful move. But she couldn't take advantage of that opportunity. That will cost her a lot. Time for the final battle. It's not Master Hand, but Ryu, Ken, and then Terry. Art of Fighting version 2300000.0 is playing. In other words, it's kind of a themed fight. He's super strong, so I have to work hard. I'm not pacing this out very well. I'm starting from 150 HP, so I wish I defeated Ryu before my HP dropped to 100. But I can't give up until the end. I have a super special move. But Terry is last, so he can use the same super special move. But this is no time for chit chat. It's really tough doing this while talking. Oh no! This is no good. Got it! It gets even tougher from here. I messed up a perfect shield. Here he comes. I gotta be on guard. Yeah, but with a power wave? If I could have pulled off a super special move, that would have been awesome. But, alright, did I make it to intensity 9.9? Yes, I did. That was hard work. Terry Bogard is really fun to play as, so I hope you enjoy playing as him in such situations. Next, let's talk about the music. This time we have something very special lined up for you. For instance, when we were deciding which songs to include in this set, we thought about concentrating on songs related to Terry, but there were a lot of big band style songs that didn't really fit the mood of battle. That aside, the music of SNK has always been great, right from the beginning. 
So this time, we selected tracks that could be called SNK style. Basically, we expanded the selection a bit to include series outside of just Fatal Fury and The King of Fighters. SNK songs have always been great, really. This was true before Neo Geo, and all the way from the old The King of Fighters games to the arrangements in the latest installment, The King of Fighters 14. We did a lot of digging around, and finally managed to narrow our many candidates down to 50 songs. <laughs> we never intended to do something like this, of course, so we submitted our 50 proposals to SNK, expecting them to pick out maybe 10 or 20 that they considered acceptable. But they told us they were, OK. <laughs> As a result, we've pretty much added in 50 songs. Have a look at the list. That's how we ended up with the list we have, but we worked hard to deliver some of the best remixes. This was a very special one-off case, and I don't think we'll be able to do the same for other series. To be honest, I think that being able to hear such a selection might make the Fighter's Pass worth quite a bit more than its price. I do hope you'll enjoy it. Challenger Pack 4 comes with a spirit board too. The spirit board can be selected via the spirits menu. Have a look at the background. If it looks familiar to you, you'll start feeling pretty nostalgic. Shinkiro-san's artwork is always so nice and vibrant, isn't it? You can also look forward to mock tournaments featuring each of the characters. That old school Athena and Ralph and Clark artwork really is something. Now for the Mii Fighters. Please have a look. SNK was also involved with the Mii Fighter set this time, so it has a strong fighting game influence. It borrows a lot from the series Nakorudu comes from, like her wind slash attack, so I hope you'll enjoy those little details. Moving on to Amiibo, here's the new lineup. Simon, Krom, and Incineroar. Each of these will be released on Friday, November 15th. Next, let's discuss the details of the updates. We've made some improvements to battle arenas. First, we're making it so you can send messages to each other in a battle arena. The messages are preset. So there's that, and also, the player who created the arena can now change the rules. We've also added the option to play either battlefield form or omega form at random in the stage settings. Aside from that, you can now pick Elite only as an arena type. Furthermore, Quick Play won't be the only way to play with people you don't know. As long as the arena type is set to public and no password is set, we've made it so anyone is now free to join. 
So I hope you'll enjoy that. Terry is due for distribution on November 6th. If you have the fighter's pass, you'll be able to get him straight away, or you can purchase him separately. Well, I think that wraps it up for our Terry Bogard showcase. I hope we were able to convey his appeal. By the way, his reveal trailer was aired in advance. It was created using SNK pixel art. The complete version of it, including the gameplay portion, is finally ready. I'd like to show it to you after this. Now this is something of an inside story, but I of course wrote the plot for SNK's pixel art pack reveal trailer. When the invitation comes out, you might recall how it says, don't be late, S. That is not what I wrote. It makes me think, ugh, this is why I hate inside jokes. After leaving it to the staff, it snuck its way in there. I just want you to know that the S is also the Super Smash Bros. series S. Well then, let's move on to the intro movie. Hey, come on! We crammed in a little too much content this time. Hopefully, I'll be able to make future showcases a little shorter.